You feel like the rogue lights are very interesting to look at from a story perspective. There's actually quite a number of rogue lights that incorporate their story through the gameplay. The best one I can think of is Hades. You know, like where where death and um, Returnal as well, where death itself, <clears throat> death itself is the point. Like you're progging through death, and also Hades on top of that because you're a god, right? You technically can't die. The rogue light feeds into that concept. Every time you die, you start all over, but then things are kind of different. You keep some progress. A lot of roguelites have trouble explaining that. Um, Returnal as well, and they use the whole alien time loop thing. But Hades, it's built into the actual premise of the game itself. Sephiroth's crazy materials and bangles and FF7 was top-notch storytelling through gameplay. Yes, yes, and that's actually proof of, I think, how superior games are in terms of storytelling, or how how potentially amazing they can be compared to film and television, because that that storytelling could not have been done in a film or television show. Um, it is a unique type of storytelling that can only be done in gameplay. And why that works so well is because the storytelling is done through agency, right? And that's the one thing that's actually missing from film and television is that the player's agency plays a big part in how the story unfolds. Done with no no dialogue, and if anything, by playing more video games, I've uh, I found my storytelling skills have sharpened considerably, like relying less on words. So far, Endwalker, story-wise, has um, it slowed significantly. I mean, there was a little bit with Highland, um, but the rest of it has been quite Quite a realm rebornish you know where i'm getting i guess maybe it's just because we're at a new location but they've dumped so much so much exposition on me so far now n walker is probably a bit of an exception because at this point ff14 has already proven itself people already know what the game is they know what to expect from it and the the amazing storytelling in heaven's ward and i would even argue stormblood and then also shadowbringers i think they they can kind of get away with being a bit indulgent, I think, in Endwalker so far. In a play, there's only so much you can do. And then film, the earliest films actually came from plays, like the way that their their screenplays were written. But then eventually, like more special effects and stuff like that, and they realize like, oh, in a film you can edit and then you can add like special effects. And that's what makes it different. You can create worlds that were not possible with, with plays. But if you look at films like, like There Will Be Blood or 2001 A Space Odyssey, they told a lot of their stories through audio and visual, and a lot of the, the audio visual stuff sticks more so than the dialogue. As you're reading this stuff, there's probably very little of this that you actually retain, you know? It's kind of like banter, which if you really enjoy the characters, sure. I mean, if this were like Barrett and Cloud talking and they're talking about what you had for lunch and check out like you know the burrito that wedge made sure that then that can be part of the experience that you can enjoy having a character that looks good or um you know like oh that's just she's obviously just getting attention with sex appeal that's that's a legitimate a legitimate reason for liking someone or getting interested in a character in a story that grabs your attention now whether or not you can hold your attention is another matter like tifa got your attention because of the way she looked probably when you first played it but then she kept your attention because her combat was cool and, you know, she had this backstory with Cloud. So are Japanese game developers smarter for just kind of giving you that visual game appeal of the characters and certain types of outfits or characters that look a certain way? I'd say it's smart. I can't necessarily say if Estinian would be as what? appealing as a character set. if he didn't look the way that he looked. Despite the fact that, you know, the events in his storyline with Heaven's Ward were amazing. For some reason, the Dragoon and the Dark Knight, they just make more interesting characters as a whole. They naturally have a, um, a moral ambiguity about them that the other characters generally don't. Your heroes generally don't. Frey had the same issue. Is that such an insidious I don't think a lot of people liked her character design from the very beginning, so they couldn't latch onto anything. And then it didn't help that the trailers didn't 
give us more of her character or more of her backstory or why like any of this matters. And so we were left hanging with nothing but her character design and then a couple of you know, one-off lines with the Vambrace. And so as a result, we just didn't connect with the character and then it's just... But it wasn't because the character was bad because she turned out to be quite an amazing character. Um, it was just unfortunate you had to wait for so long. And so Dion might be facing the same thing. I've seen fairer faces Maybe his after a bout character of bad design shellfish. just isn't as appealing as the other characters, and I think that's the reason why people aren't so keen on Hugo either at the moment, because there's not much to really hold on to right now. But then you never know. Once the the game actually begins, and then you start getting more details about the character himself, the story can be in the character design. And if you don't have good character design, then you potentially not necessarily don't have a good story, but you like have a wasted opportunity to kind of get people in, you know? And I, I learned that. That's something I actually learned from more from video games that's not so apparent in the world of film and television. Because I think in, in film and television, when you're talking about like story in the traditional sense, it really is about character development and the person as a character. A video game is a little bit more marketing focused. And so the character design the story has to be told through the character design as much as the character development. Funny enough, that's also why Game of Thrones, uh, it connected with so many people is because it wasn't just great character development, but the character designs were fantastic. You know, the character design told you about the character and then the character development just filled out more of the details. And that's, th that's true also in Marvel. That's why I, I feel like games like Near Automata and like Haunting Ground, they're so good, not necessarily because the, the story itself is the best, it's because they weave the gameplay and the story together so well. Like the gameplay feeds off the story, the story feeds off the gameplay. Whereas a game, I think a lot of games, what they struggle with, like even Final Fantasy XIV, is there's clearly gameplay stuff that's like the fun stuff, that that's like the reason why people are... Uh, intrigued and that's what stimulates their senses but then there's also like the story stuff that is like what's supposed to hold their attention and get them emotionally invested and then they don't know entirely how to put those two things together and so it can feel somewhat disparate like i'm doing stuff for the sake of it's fulfilling a story objective but it doesn't fulfill a gameplay objective <laughs> I am not Estinian! Not quite. You're not like his twin brother, are you? So far, the main thing that's mattered the most since starting Endwalker has been Alphino and Alice's relationship with Fortuno, their father. They probably know it, but I really wish that they would focus more on stuff like that. Like, the stuff that really matters, like emotionally, you know? In a game, in its story. And it doesn't have to be plot-wise. You know, it doesn't have to be a plot per se, but give us the stuff that really, like, emotionally matters. That's the stuff that keeps us kind of emotionally invested, you know? It was the same thing with Frey and Forspoken. What really mattered was her relationship with her mother, but that didn't happen at all for a good 20-something hours in the game. And in Heaven's War, like, so many things mattered, emotionally mattered, and that's probably what made it so good. Emmerich's relationship with his father and being rejected as a son. Uh, Estinian's kind of blind vengeance against the, the dragons. Nidhogg's blind vengeance against the humans. I guess in the end, that's all anyone really asks for. Anyone, like any audience member, video game or film or otherwise. It's just, like, make me care. Make me care and keep me caring. Now, a game like Until Dawn or The Quarry, they have the exact opposite problem. It's like it's too much story, not enough gameplay. The story is what makes the game matter. Um, the gameplay is what keeps it like stimulating. And when you have both of them combined is when you have that total impactful experience. Too much story, not enough gameplay is a problem and vice versa as well. My name is uh, Matsia and I'm here to see Kalzao. Oh, it seems he's busy. I'll come back later then. Oh, poor guy. That storytelling edict basically is do whatever it takes to keep the to grab the audience's attention and hold their attention. And sure, storycraft in terms of words, like 
heart of darknesses and escalations, deepest pains, greatest fears, compelling questions. Those are all just tools. But a game like FF14 or a game like Forspoken or these big open world games, Dragon's Dogma, it's usually the character that is like the foray into the world. Now, the character's appeal could be in many different ways. It could be just a visual appeal. It could be their combat. See, this is cool. I love this. I love that your, your party is actually following you. I'm sure your bosom fish are very fresh, but this is rather sudden. I don't need any fish right now, so thanks, but no thanks. Wait, what? I failed. Oh god, I failed. I completely failed. A hawker, are you? Do you sell fruit by any chance? If so, I want to buy some Amra. Let's say a dozen. They don't need to be export quality. Uh, Amra Shamara. All of it wears me down. I find myself feeling constantly hungry. Are you sure you're actually hungry? I know how you feel. Okay. Let's say we do. Thank you. A pity you don't sell fruit, but I enjoy our little chat. Oh, no! It was a red herring. I like this quest. I like this one. Because we're helping this guy. Never mind. If nothing else, you left her with a positive impression. Let's move on to the north side town, shall we? If you can get your audience to care about the character... And a good ending, sure, but... If you can get them to care about a character in whatever way that's done, you can get away with a lot. Some fresh fish will sell your stomach. No, let's shove the freaking fish down his stomach. Take this fish and shove it down your tailpipe. See, this is cool. You actually made the quest matter because you were trying to help this poor dude sell some fish. You see what I mean? Like, just one little small change. Like, imagine if you made this guy... I mean, he's already quite cool already, but... Imagine if you made him, like, a child that was trying to sell some fish because they uh, needed to sell enough fish to make some money to feed their family, for example. Like, it doesn't require a lot of, you know, changing. Just a couple of lines of dialogue or even a, a, slight, a slight change. But instantly you care about the quest more. There are ways of getting you to care about the character immediately, you know? Like, if, if he were being beat, like, the way that he was introduced, what if he were being beaten up by a bunch of bullies that were trying to steal his fish or something? There's only so much I can do alone. I hope that things will return to normal for uh, Kalzal. Oh, this is very Realm Reborn, the music. Reminds me of those uh, very emotional moments when we were feeling for Tataru failing at her ambitions at becoming a summoner. Isn't this great? Like, he's trying so hard to sell some fish, and probably his family depends on it, and he's being humble, right? Even when people aren't being fair to him, he's still, okay, I'm sorry if I troubled you. I'll try elsewhere. You want this guy to win, you know? Like, and that's where the empathy for the main character comes from. You want this character to win. Why was it that in Octopath Traveler, the part of the demo we played, why is it that we connect so much with um, Hikari versus uh, Casti? Well, do you really want Casti to win? Because you want to win as a player, right? I felt obligated to go forward with the, the game, sure. But with Hikari, I felt like he was being treated so unfairly, despite his best efforts, that yeah, I want him to win, and oh, awesome, I'm controlling him, so I want to win too. So I have done almost no fighting ever since starting Endwalker. Aside from a couple of, like, hunt quests, killing one or two bugs here or there, it's slow. Uh, there's almost no combat, and a lot of the character interactions and the quests have been very meaningless, I have to say. The highlights so far, the highlights of Endwalker so far for me have been, well, gameplay-wise, the fact that characters can follow you, like a la Chrono Trigger. That was awesome. That, that, for some reason when I saw that, I thought, oh, oh shoot. The experience of playing Final Fantasy XIV, which is like playing with friends and the journey with friends, it suddenly came to life uh, because we haven't had any raids yet. Story-wise, for me and character-wise, what has been the highlight has absolutely been Alphino, Alice, and their father. But aside from that, I've just been going from place to place and killing a couple of random enemies and doing a couple of, you know, like, shooting a hornbill with a blow dart gun and doing emotes in front of Estinian. Cool, I got to see Estinian's hair. 
his new hairstyle. Neat. That's probably how his hair looked underneath his helmet, too, by the way. Heaven's Ward absolutely just hit the ground running, I thought. You're a refugee, and um, there was like a whole thing brewing inside of Ishgard that just kept the, the story going. And on top of that, you had battles. So like the gameplay and the story was like kind of going hand in hand. It was great. Paced very well. Stormblood, um, I would say yes, Stormblood for 4.0, but then the big sidetrack after you went to Kugane. And then Shadowbringers, yes, absolutely brought it. Endwalker, I'm not quite feeling it right now. I do want to make streaming like a regular thing. I don't I don't have a particular preference for a game. I will try anything. Um, and in fact, playing games I haven't played yet, there's an advantage in that I am looking at everything with fresh eyes. I have no bias towards the game. I don't like it. I don't hate it. I have no opinion of it. And that will often give people that really do love the game, like fans of the game, a fresh perspective that they perhaps haven't seen before. So that was certainly the case with Kingdom Hearts. Absolutely. It comes down to essential context again. I came into this game with no context at all, and it turned out to uh, be illuminating to a couple of people. I would like to limit it to one game per stream. So it, it's not going to be like this, where we went from power stream, uh, power wash simulator over to Final Fantasy 14, over to Octopath Traveler, over to Last Remnant. Usually it's going to be like one game per stream, so it's not like too confusing. So thanks again so much for, for dropping on by. Before I ramble off too much, uh, once again, I will start streaming, live streaming gameplay at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time going forward.